John chapter 1 from verses 14 to 15 has been so rich to us. It has been a comfort and an encouragement to our spirits. We will still be plumbing the depths of the riches of God in these verses as the Holy Ghost gives us help. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness of him and cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. That I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering that I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead that I might apprehend that which I've been apprehended for. When the Lord invited Moses on top Mount Sinai to replace the tablets of the law, he descended in the cloud. This is the kavod, the heavy, weighty glory of God, and proclaimed his name, the Lord. Yahweh. This is what the Lord said as he revealed himself to Moses in Exodus 34 from verse 6 to 7. Then the Lord passed in front of Moses and called out, The Lord, the Lord God, is merciful and gracious, slow to anger long-suffering, and abounding in goodness and truth, keeping mercy to a thousand generations, forgiving iniquity, transgression, and sin. Yet he will by no means excuse the guilty. He will visit the iniquity of the fathers on their children and grandchildren to the third and fourth generations. Principle to God's revelation of himself is his grace, which when viewed from the biblical context can be seen from the word has said as the loving kindness and the tender mercies, the loyal love of our God. God proclaims his own name as the merciful God, who is abounding in goodness and truth. The revelation of God shown to Moses in the cloud has been revealed to us in Jesus Christ. We behold his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. It is in Jesus that mercy and truth are met together, that righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Psalms 85 verse 10. Speaking of Jesus in Psalms 89, in remembering the covenant with David, 
Ethan, the Ezraite, sings, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known your faithfulness to all generations. For I have said, mercy shall be built up forever. Your faithfulness you shall establish in the very heavens. And in verse 14, he says, Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Mercy and truth go before your face. And then in verse 15, Blessed are the people who know the joyful sound. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your countenance. Mercy and truth is the joyful sound of the Lord. The Lord has showed us his mercy in Jesus. And in his truth, a horn is exalted, for the Lord is our defense. And the Holy One of Israel, our King. Psalms 100. In the celebration of the Lord's kingship, it proclaims, Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gate with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. His mercy that is everlasting and this truth that endures is given to us in Jesus Christ the only begotten Son of God. Lamentations 3, verse 22 to 23. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. Another would say the steadfast love of the Lord never ceaseth. His mercies never come. To an end. In verse 23, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Psalm 63, verse 3. And again in Psalms 48, verse 9 to 10, we have thought of thy loving kindness, O God. In the midst of thy temple, according to thy name, O Yahweh, so is thy praise unto the ends of the earth. Thy right hand is full of righteousness. We see now, we know, we understand. At this very moment, we are recipients of the faithfulness, the loving kindness, and the tender mercies of our God. We experience it new every morning. We are so comforted. We are so encouraged. We are so blessed. Our souls have found rest, that we behold his cavalry, 
his weighty, heavy glory. Full of grace and truth. As we see the abundance of the loving kindness and tender mercies of our God, we respond by saying, How excellent, how excellent is thy loving kindness. Is thy loving kindness, O God. Therefore the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fullness of thine house, and thou shalt make them drink of the rivers of thy pleasure. O oh, continue thy loving kindness. O oh, continue thy tender mercies unto them that know you, unto them that fear you. And they shall make them drink out of the rivers of thy pleasure. In you, O oh God, is the fountain of life. And in your light, Lord Jesus, we see light. How precious are thy thoughts unto us, O oh Lord. How great is the sum of them. Should we count them, they are more in number than the sand when we are awake we are still with thee wow we have to end this meditation <laughs> so in closing as we give thanks to the lord as we express our gratitude to god as we pray we say to him your steadfast love O god extend to the heavens your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Your righteousness is like majestic mountains, and your wisdom like the depths of the sea. And you come to me, filling my heart with your loving kindness. I find my peace in the shadows of your wings i eat my fill from the abundance of your household and i drink from the streams of rejoicing you are my king I know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed unto his death that I might apprehend that which I've been apprehended for that I might apprehend have been apprehended for being conformed unto his death that I might apprehend that which have been apprehended for apprehended